I'm the coder. To many of you, that might not mean much. That might not mean much to many of you. Coding might, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Oh, all right. Coding might not mean much to many of you. It's that thing that in the 1980s powered those big, bulky computers that kind of worked like magic. And now we have powerful people in our world, like President Barack Obama, starting initiatives to make sure that we have computer science in all of our schools. This is a powerful tool. I'm going to show you how this is going to change our world and how it already has. Right? Note that it's instructions that bridge the gap. That's really the main thing that makes it so powerful. It bridges a gap. It gives us that sense that we can make whatever we want, that those crazy ideas that you might have thought about but thought, hey, I can never make that, that those are possible. That you can get in touch with people all over the world with just a computer and internet connection. That's the power that it's bringing, and it's cool. My love for code came from a frustration. I was an entrepreneur. I still am. When I was in lower school, I started a lot of blogs and online companies that I thought would be the brand venture that would bring me to the top and make me a success as like a 10-year-old. For all my websites, I didn't really know code, so I had to use these website builders. A lot of them were inside the box for people that were small business owners and didn't really have the time to build their own website. And I was thinking outside the box. I didn't want to make something without much customization. I wanted to make something that I could call my own, that I felt, wow, this is my online presence. This is amazing. All right, here's an example. CNN is powered by... Um, a system called WordPress. Maybe some of you know it. It powers a lot of great blogs and websites. This is what I was really limited to for a fair bit of my techno technological career. Until I discovered coding. I had taken the initiative to create a blog just out of simple code text. And as soon as I realized that I really couldn't achieve what I wanted to achieve without endeavoring into this great community, that's when I really realized that coding was the thing that was going to change that, and that's really what I needed to invest my time into. Last August, I went to the Flatiron School for four weeks. The Flatiron School started as in a program for young adults to go and give them a great pathway into the world of computer science. People would leave their three-month program with jobs at powerful tech companies like Google, Etsy, and Kickstarter, just to name a few. Right, these are great companies and this is a great program. I really found a place where I can fit in, where I learned all this great code and met amazing people and really learned that whatever you have is not impossible and that these things are awesome. And, you know, I was able to learn enough code that I could replicate Twitter's website. It's just incredible what I was able to learn, and I really think that that was something fundamental in my coding career that I would never have been able to get by without. In order to understand code, though, you really have to understand and deeply appreciate the code that goes into the amazing websites that we use. They're great, and the programmers and developers really do get a lot of respect for that. I'm going to give a great example. Let's say that you were to go to Twitter's website and right, you see all this great, the colors and all the great styling that Twitter did. That's great, but that's not actually what the developers are making. Right? Twitter uses this language called Ruby. Ruby is really the one language that powers a lot of these great ideas. And it's what I learned. There are other languages like it, but this is really in my opinion, the best one. It was made by a man named Yukihiro Matsumoto from Japan. And he, be, he started the language because of um, he was a little annoyed that all these other coding languages at the time were really hard to learn. They didn't have great syntax, which is like the documentation. And he was really annoyed by that. 
So we created Ruby, and now it's powering all these great websites. Here's another example. Right? Let's say that Mark Zuckerberg, um, he says, how am I going to send an email to every single person at Facebook wishing them a happy birthday? Mark Zuckerberg can't do that. He doesn't have the time to send an email to every single person who has a Facebook account wishing them a happy birthday. He's a billionaire. He doesn't have that time. So what they do is they bridge that gap. They write the instructions that has the computer interpret what they say. He'll say, okay, if it's this person's birthday, send them an email. So if you were to go to Facebook's webpage after you log in, the code that you're seeing, if you press like the view code source, isn't the code that the Facebook developers are writing, it's the computer's interpretation. And that's what really makes it all possible. You do have to ponder for a second. That's me when I had hair, by the way. Um, you have to ponder for a second, though. Why are we investing all this money, time, and amazing ideas into something so new and sometimes unreliable like code or technology? The answer isn't simple, but if you really take a minute to dig deep under the surface, you really realize this is an incredible tool. All right. With technology, we can talk with people all around the world, and with just a computer and Wi-Fi, really make something that you call your own and you would never envision yourself making. It's a great tool, and it really is the one thing that we need if we want to power our world. All right, the future, when we go into the future, it's not as if we're going to have less tech. We're not going to go from a high-tech present day to a Flintstones future. It's not going to happen, but it could. I mean, anything's possible, but it's not going to happen because of the digital revolution. Things are pushing forward. It's little space that they want everyone to use and that they call their own. But if they're just fighting for this own little space and not expanding out of it, how do we connect the internet and how do we make the digital revolution better if it's not connected? My second problem is with our ideas. Our ideas are great, and I know that a digital revolution hasn't really started yet, but we're not looking as far into the future as we need to be. I was reading an Elon Musk biography by Ashley Vance and came across a great quote talking about how we don't have as many revolutionary ideas, like the wheel. I'm not saying that we need another wheel, and I'm not saying that it's going to be invented, because it won't. It was a cornerstone, and we don't need that anymore because we already invented it. But what I'm saying is there are so many things that are just trying to build off of each other, right? People buy iPhones because Apple makes it a product that's easy to use and that is great compatibility. They're not, they're, Apple doesn't fight as much. Apple's an open company, and it's great in technology. And Apple's the only one that uses their operating system. Think about Android and how many companies use Androids and say that their phone is the next big thing because they made a spin-off. It's still Android. They're trying to fight, but they're still using the same resources. And if we keep doing this, it's not pushing our future forward. But I think I'm on the brink of some sort of solution. This is Open Inc. Back in January, I started this as a concept idea, which I've now grown into my own business even though I'm the only employee. It's a web app or website, which is your own personal dashboard for the internet. It brings the internet together and kind of fairly sanctions all the competition online so that all these great companies don't have to stop fighting for their space, but we bring them all together. Right? It's not the best thing that they're still fighting for the space, but if we have this one place where you connect all of your accounts and find a place where all this stuff is brought together and all the technology is used to its best ability by bringing it together, that's the stuff that we need. And that's the stuff that's going to power the future, bringing it all together and working together to make sure that our tech isn't separate and that if everyone's using it and we're all looking forward, then we're going to get that great future. I'm not saying or promising that anyone's gonna have a Marty McFly future, even though that is amazing. But 
all that I'm saying is if we want our future to be great and make sure that the future of the human race is great, then we need to make sure that all these things are open and connected. Thank you.